you will not believe the impact this method makes if you follow these easy steps in 2025. We will uncover the do's and don'ts and I will share invaluable insights from my three years of experience with AI image generation. It doesn't matter if you prefer flux or stable diffusion, these techniques are universal. For Flux I'm using Copex Timeless X Plus in version 3 and for Stable Diffusion I prefer Cyber Realistic XL. In order to follow along properly you will need my Ellie from The Last of Us Laura and also the Swarhammer Night Lords Laura from Velvet S. You can either use Forge UI or Automatic 11.11. Your models go to your web UI folder under Model Stable Diffusion and the LoRa's go into the LoRa folder. The first misconception I see when people starting out is that they expect images like this to fall out of the UI by just one click. It can happen but it's pretty unlikely so instead let's engineer us a nice prompt, shall we? Since we are working with Flux, I select Flux up here and I make sure that I have the correct checkpoint selected. Also for Flux we need the Clip L, the T5 XXL and the Flux VAE. I leave the sampler and scheduler as is and set the sampling steps to 25. Since I want a horizontal image, I'm selecting 16 by 9. This here is an extension called a spec ratio helper. I will tell you in a moment how you can install it. Start with a simple prompt like this. A woman kneels in the snow holding a rifle with snowflakes falling around her in a cold wintry forest. Render this and then get more complex. You could describe for example how the rifle looks, how special lighting effects in the image behave or you could describe the facial expression. Repeat the process of refining your prompt and rendering until you find images that you really like as a base. Pro tip, always render at least two images per prompt. AI outputs can vary and one image might have flaws while another nails your vision. Don't forget to put in your LoRa by clicking on the LoRa tab down here and then do one click on the example image. Now you should see this entry here in angle brackets. Colon 1 means to use it at a strength of 100%. The very first render you do will take usually longer because it needs to load all the models from your hard drive into your VRAM. Even on my 4080 with flux it takes about 1 minute to render 3 images so I will skip ahead. These are great but I already know that my Ellie Laura can put out great images so let's add the Night Lord Laura. We go to the LoRa tab again and we click on the Flux Night Lord 40k LoRa. Let's render it again without any changes because some LoRa's come out stronger than others so you need to find a balance and make some test renders first and that's what we are doing here. While these images are also great I want less The Last of Us and more Warhammer so let's decrease the strength of the Last of Us LoRa here. We set it to 0.5. Now we cut the trigger word from here and we are changing the prompt here to holding a bolter gun in armor and now we paste the trigger word behind this. We render once more. By the way you can press Ctrl and enter to start your generation because sometimes you scroll down and that way you don't have to scroll up to click the generate button. These outputs are amazing. We are going to take the image up here and use it as a base image. I see a lot of you using Hyrus Fix at this stage. I would advise you against it because it takes a lot of time to render and prompt engineering is an iterative process so you want to render fast that you can change and try out prompts and LoRa's. Also I will show you now a couple of steps you would want to take before upscaling your images to high res masterpieces like this. The next step is framing our image. We take our image and we click the button down here. This is another extension I'm using, it's called Mini Paint. I love it because it's a simple image editor directly integrated in your UI. No jumping back and forth between applications anymore. I use it for color correction but at this stage I also use it mainly for cropping. Take this image here for example. It's great 
but these parts don't contribute to the story it tells of an amazing angel woman with black wings holding a magical sword. I cropped it like this and to me it feels much more like it's focused on the important things now. But don't overdo it. Cropping the image to this area would lose crucial information like the oppressive atmosphere or the burning buildings in the background. By the way, you can install all the extensions I'm showcasing here by clicking on the extensions tab, available, click load from, and here you type the name of the extension, like mini paint. Since I already have it installed, I need to uncheck this box so it gets unfiltered. Click the button on the right, and after it's installed, make sure to restart your UI. There's nothing wrong with our image, but I'm going to crop it anyway. You always want to make sure that the object of interest is in the center. In our case it's a close-up shot so it's the face of the girl. Also make sure to not cut any objects in half, in our case the trees, because it can look very confusing on the sides of the image. To execute click the crop icon up here. Now it's time to send our image back, so click here on send and then click send to image to image because that's where we are going next. Here select initial image and press ok. One flaw of mini paint is that it does not take over the prompt. So either copy it over from the text to image tab or if you use an existing image go to the PNG info tab. Drag your image in and here I mark the prompt and with Ctrl C I copy it and over here I paste it with Ctrl V. So for our next step should be in paint or upscale first. It depends. You should fix errors like this always before the upscale. Smaller details like eye color can be changed later. Remember the rule of thumb for upscaling is crap in crap out. In painting is the art of changing, adding or removing an item from an image. And I show you something even better. I show you in paint sketch. It gives you so much more control for adding items. So here we click to in paint sketch and now we can zoom in. We click up here and from the color palette we select black. We want to give her a nice bandana. Draw a black line over her head. A little more maybe. I want the bandana to be mainly red so we select the red color here and then we paint over it. In paint sketch will take all the color information we give it and use it as a base. The colored area is also the in painting mask. For our next step we have to remove our prompt. I press ctrl x here because we still need it and I write black and red bandana. Now we scroll down and we set the inpaint area to only masked. Here select resize by because it's only for the inpainted area and set it to 0.6. Because like I said earlier all the color we gave it is also our inpainting mask. Let's try a denoising strength of 0.8 here. So everywhere between 0.75 and 0.9 would work probably. The higher the denoising the more changes are in the image. I want to have two resulting images and I press generate. Our bandana is mainly red but that's no problem. Look how beautiful it fits on the hair. Probably overdid it with the red here but I like the result so we keep it as is. So the right one here is a little bit too much gangster for my taste so we take the left image to work with. We click the button down here to send it over to inpaint. Let us try to fix the skull badge here. We are using normal inpainting instead of inpaint sketch because we don't add something but we are trying to fix something that's already there. We go up here and we prompt skull badge and then we scroll down and here for our denoising strength let's select 0.7. This may be still too high but we will see the rest of our settings look good. Let's render our image and see the results. Okay this is definitely too much change so we go down here and we go to 0.6. Let's render one more time. The lower the denoising, the more is kept from the original image. This here looks good, 
Oh yeah, I love this here. That is a very nice skull badge. I mean, it removed most of the red areas, but I'm okay with that. Remember to click the send to in paint button, otherwise you are going to work with the wrong image. Let's clean our mask by clicking the blue button up here. How about we try to give her some battle scar? We go to in paint sketch again and the red color is still selected. Great. Let's give her a battle scar here and maybe also so here over her eye. Here I write nasty battle scar healed. I don't know if Flux knows this, but we will see. I set the denoising back to 0.8 and we are going to render now. This turned out more like a drop of blood instead of a battle scar, but I like this one here, so we are going to keep it. Like I told you earlier, it's good to always make two renders at least, because the first one wasn't that great, but this one here is good. We send the image over again, and now it's time to paste in our original prompt again, because we are going into the next chapter. I send it to the InPan tab, we need to send it to the image to image tab with this button here. Now our image is in and we can work with it. If you are enjoying the video so far, hit the like button so it can spread to more people and also consider subscribing to not miss out on any cool AI techniques. Thank you for doing that. Now it's finally time to upscale our image. For that, we are going to set our sampling steps to 25. We set our denoising strength to 0.4 because we want some changes, but not too much. I will show you in a moment what happens when you set it too high. We are not changing our resize by resolution because we're using a script called Ultimate SD Upscale. You need to install it like I showed you earlier with the other extensions via the extensions tab. Here we select scale from image size. Here you can pick any upscaler you want, but I love the Forex Ultra Sharp the most for photorealistic images. For anime, I prefer the 4x anime 6b upscaler. I set the tile width to 1024, but that depends on your graphics card. If you have less than 16GB of VRAM, you may want to go to 768 or leave it at 512. Another great tip, if you're using After Detailer, now is a good time to turn it off. Otherwise, this could ruin your faces, especially if you have a low resolution tile. I'm pressing Ctrl Enter, let's try it out with these settings. This is our upscaled result. So as you can see, it changed the batch a bit, but it kept the skull intact. That is the reason why it's important to fix errors first. Here I rendered the image again two times, on the left with 0.3 and on the right with 0.6. The 0.6 version has much more details, but it changed some elements like the backpack or the skull badge or the scar quite a bit. And it also looks like her hand is now morphed with the gun and it doesn't look like a gun anymore. So the 0.3 version has a lot more of our original details. So I think the 0.4 version we created originally has the best of both worlds and we are working with this image now. But we are not done yet. I have one trick up my sleeve. Now you have two options. You could send it over to the image tab again and do the same with a lower denoising like 0.2 for example. But I like to keep it simple. So I'm going to click the button down here to send it over to the extras tab. And here we select our upscaler again. And I set it to scale by 2 and I press generate. This is much faster than the Ultimate SD upscale, but it won't give me as much detail. Because the Forex Ultra Sharp is just a mathematical upscaler, it's not an AI image model. This is our final image and I think the upscaler gave it a nice finish, uh, increasing some details even more and to me that's a perfect result. I hope you had fun and that you learned a lot in this tutorial. If you ever wanted to learn how to train a Laura like my amazing Ellie from The Last of Us Laura, then I suggest you check out this video next.